Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome to uh, Talk Story today. I'm your host, Dr. Norman Wilson, and I have a, a very special guest today. I'm just delighted to have this lady with us. She's an international healer to begin with. Uh, she's a teacher, a hypnotherapist, uh, and a fellow shaman, if you will, and she's also a best selling author. And her name is Ariane Thomas. And welcome, Ariane. It's so nice to see you. Oh, Norm, thank you so much for having me here today. Uh, I'd like to have just a few questions I want to ask you to get things rolling along the way here, if you will. Uh, I want to get something out right away. What are the titles of your books? And where can people get them? Sure. Mm -hmm. um, my first book is. Um, Healing Family Patterns, Ancestral Lineage Clearing for Personal Development. And the second book is Changing Our Genetic Heritage, Creating a New Reality for Ourselves and Future Generations. And they're available at my website, ancestrallineageclearing.com. They're also available on Amazon, and you can get them from Barnes and & Noble and at your local bookstore. I understand also, did you not co-author uh, some other work also? Yes, I co-authored three international um, anthologies, uh, one called The Female Factor, a confidence builder for women. Um, the second one was The Total Woman, and those were edited by Linda Ellis um, Peters, and the, and the third um, international anthology was uh, yoga for the brain inspired wisdom um, inspired words of wisdom and that's a puzzle book that was edited by Christina Smith and those are also available on Amazon and um, they're also available on my website and the puzzle book is great fun if you're into puzzles and word games my wife is, so that might be a good one for me to get from a little surprise. Sure. <laughs> but I, I want to get those things right up front because sometimes I forget to ask. And oh, well, thank you, Norm. There's hard work into these things, and I think they're of value to have people know where you can get them. Okay, uh, I understand that you are the foundation or the founder of an organization called New Dream Foundation. What is that? It is a nonprofit organization that's dedicated to awakening the sacred feminine. And our organization is founded for supporting women who are on their sacred path to connecting with the divine feminine. And we do programs for women, such as the full moon ceremony, where we get together monthly um, with women to um, uh, bring out women's connection with the divine feminine. We also hold other ceremonies for women throughout their lifetimes. We also offer meditations um, and meditations on um, the, sacred, uh, uh, the sacred quarterly uh, moon cycles, the equinoxes and the solstices. And we offer programs and summits. We have just completed a summit on women emerging, uh, reclaiming our souls from sexual abuse. And we offer a variety of programs uh, on our website, sacredfeminineawakening.com. And we invite everybody to come. And we also have programs that are available for men on our site too, who want to get in touch with their own feminine natures. Uh, I, this is important. I'm working with a client in England, and she is on a very special journey. And I think that I would like you to give me your email address in a private email that I can send to her to get in touch with this organization. I think it would be wonderful help for her. I'd be delighted to. My goodness, thank you so much. I just, it just wretched with me. Yes, this is what she needs right now. <laughs> It's very good. Okay, I'm glad you got into that little business. All right. Uh, as a fellow healer, I'm always interested in what techniques other healers use to do 
mind explaining some of the techniques you use and bringing healing to your clients? And I know you don't do the healing personally, and I don't either. But you set the thing in motion. <laughs> okay. So let's let's put this. What things do you use to set the healing process in motion? Does that sound better? Certainly. Well, as you and I both know, and as I tell my clients, the only person that can heal you is yourself. And what we do is we support you in your healing process. And we hold space for you to initiate that healing within. What I do is my uh, particular expertise in my niche is healing unwanted generational family patterns. Because a lot of us are carrying genetic patterns from the past that have been repeated generation after generation after generation. Those patterns are set in our genes and they get triggered by the belief systems that we are told in our family stories. And these genetic patterns and these belief systems revolve around finances, relationships, health, and um, our own self-worth and well-being, as well as our connection with the divine. And they get instilled in us at very young age, at a very young age, and then as we grow, they blossom into these barriers that stop us from living a life of joy and, and inspiration and health and, um, and having a, a joyous, wonderful life. And then we get to a point where we go, why is my life not working? Why am, I, um, why am I encountering these problems with poverty? Why am I having heart disease or diabetes or cancer? Um, why am I getting divorced again and again or in abusive relationships? Um, why can't I make my life work? Why do I continually have these jobs where I can't get ahead or I have these terrible bosses or I hate my work? I can't find my life's passion. Why can't I connect with the divine so that I know where my place in this world is? And a lot of it um, relates back to the stories our family told us. So that when I get to talking to the client, I say, well, did your parents have this problem? Do your brothers and sisters have this problem? Do your aunts and uncles have this problem? Do your cousins have this problem? And it turns out that not only um, have you been divorced once or twice, but your parents were divorced. Your brothers and sisters have been divorced multiple times. Um, your grandparents had terrible relationships. Um, perhaps you came from a... Um, a a family where there were generations where your grandparents were married to people who died in wars, who were sailors lost at sea, um, who had a series of disasters in their relationships. And this all gets set, set in your genetic patterns. Mm -hmm. And that's where the issue arose and that's where it needs to be healed. Sure. Mm -hmm. And so, I started this work because in my family, it came out that there was multi-generational sexual abuse. And that blew the family apart um, because it turned out that not only were my sisters sexually abused, but so was my mother, my aunt. Um, I suspect my grandmother was sexually abused. Um, and, uh, and so it went back multiple generations and I couldn't go back further than that because my great grandmother and all, all of that had passed. 
And so spirit took me on a journey to meet my ancestors and to discover where that original family pattern began and how it began. Mm -hmm. And what I discovered, not only in my family, but in working with clients, is that our ancestors never meant for these problems to arise in our family. You know, our ancestors don't wake up one morning and go, gee, I think I'm going to beat my wife. Mm -hmm. You know, things don't happen that way. We make mistakes in our lives that sometimes we don't have the opportunity to correct. We don't know how to fix them. We don't know where we can correct those issues. And so what happens is they get in, embedded in our genetic pattern. They get embedded in our belief system. And so we pass them down to our children and they pass them down to the grandchildren and it goes on and on and on. And I found that this generational pattern of sexual abuse started 450 years ago. Mm -hmm. And when I discovered what happened and I told my ancestor that this was still going on in the family, she was appalled. It's like, oh my God, what have I done? Mm -hmm. And what happened is we reversed this curse in our family. Mm -hmm. we, we reversed the energy that started the abuse pattern. And we brought back positive energy into the present. And we reset the genetic pattern in the family. Mm -hmm. Now this occurred, this occurred um, more than 10 years ago now. Mm -hmm. And since that time, there has been no sexual abuse, no domestic abuse, and no rape in the family. Yeah. And prior to that time, I had several nieces that were raped. Mm -hmm. uh, I had sisters who were in, um, in marriages where there was domestic abuse um, and were in very difficult marriages. And all of that has dissipated. It has all shifted and it's gone. I, I see a direct connection here to uh, core beliefs. The people have trouble getting rid of those that have been implanted by parents at steps along the way. And it's hard. It's very difficult. Yes. Um, it's very difficult. One of the things that uh, I would be interested in knowing is when you have a client, how do you approach them in getting at what they view as their issue? Because <laughs> it's different, isn't it? It is. It's very different. My initial approach is to let them, let them tell me what is bothering them in their life. Okay. What do you see as your block? Mm -hmm. what, is, what is the most important thing in your life that is causing you difficulty? And uh, let's take money for an example, right, Norm? I mean, that's a big problem for a lot of people. Well, money is generally not the problem because nobody's allergic to green paper, right? <laughs> that's a good way of putting it. <laughs> well, that's what I tell my clients and I always get a laugh out of them. You know, people aren't allergic to green paper. Right. So once we get past the idea that money's the problem, then it's like, okay, so let's talk about the belief around money. Mm -hmm. Is it about control of money? Is it about, I'm not worthy to have money? Is it about the world is an unsafe place and I don't have power? Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. What did your parents tell you about money? 
what did your what did your parents tell you about money it's like you have to hang on to it because you're never going to get any more so mm -hmm. hang on to every penny you get that's a lack of trust excellent oh yeah okay i love it yeah and the other thing is we're talking about generational patterns of poverty and many of us and this is worldwide came from generations and cultures where there was slavery and servitude and we were under the control of the nobility of warlords of tribal leaders of people who had control of what we did, how we did it, the land, and our production. Mm -hmm. So it's about not having control of our worth, mm -hmm. not having control of our lives, and not having control of the outcome. And so I go through a series of questions about, okay, let's, let's talk about um, values. Mm -hmm. And so I look for what are the core beliefs behind this issue of not having enough? And what's the underlying issue? And once we find the underlying issue, then we can identify that ancestor we need to find that created the family pattern that we need to resolve. I noticed in your statements that at no point are you implying that it's your client's fault. Absolutely not. There is no blame yes. and no judgment. That's just wonderful <laughs> because so often I think they look for that. Yes. And that, that's not good. <laughs> And, and Norm, let me, let me tell you and tell the audience uh, a classic story. All right, go ahead. Uh, I was doing a group session, and sometimes in a group session you can't do individual work. And I, I tried to tell people that when we're looking for an ancestor, you have to have your intention be stated in the positive. We're looking for an ancestor who had this problem so that we can, um, we can shift the energy. Well, I didn't get to each individual person. And the, um, one of the participants was looking for her ancestor who started the abuse pattern in her family. And so her intention was, I want to find the SOB who started this abuse pattern. <laughs> So we go back and we travel back into time to find the ancestor. She gets back into the past, finds the ancestor, and the ancestor goes, hmm, turns his back and walks away. Mm -hmm. He wasn't about to talk to her because she wasn't willing to understand what the <laughs> situation was and how he got into this problem. And so bless her heart, I offered to help, help work with her individually so that we could reset this, so we can find out how that happened. Intention, doesn't it? Yes. Intention yeah. is everything. Yeah. That's and, the stage. <laughs> and what clients find when we go in and talk to their ancestors is that there is no blame for the ancestors because the ancestors really get caught up in these very, very difficult situations and they get lost. Yeah. They, they get lost. It becomes in a vicious circle. Yes. You know, and it repeats itself. That's, that's an interesting way. The approach is, is very forward going. Yes. Very, very positive, very open and non-judgmental. And that, I'm glad to hear that. Yes. Yeah. Sometimes counselors get a little too aggressive. You know what I mean? <laughs> this is not about judgment. This is not about blame. This is about healing. I love it because it's about not. healing them. Because when you heal the ancestors, you heal you. Sure. You heal the family. 
And once you heal the family, we can heal the planet. Absolutely. Perfect. Perfect. I just love it. That's great. Okay. Uh, I noticed that you do um, dream work. Oh, yes. And um, this client that I'm working with in England begins with dreams. Mm -hmm. Interpretation of, well, I don't feel I can interpret her dream. It isn't up to me to do that for her. Right, right. Okay, let's, let's talk about what do you do when it comes to uh, doing your dream work? How do you help people interpret what they've experienced? Well, um, actually, Norm, I do it the other way around. Yeah. I don't do dream interpretation work. Mm -hmm. I dream for my clients. I have been a dreamer for about 40 years now. Mm -hmm. And when I have a client who has a particularly difficult issue that we have trouble getting to the bottom of, uh, and I particularly dream for groups. Mm -hmm. um, like I have gone to a variety of vision quests over the years. And when I'm in, um, intimate group situations um i go to groups and i will dream and and i wake up in the morning and i go this is what's going on in the group this is what the issue is this is where we're getting stuck this is where we can't move forward and when i'm working with a client um particularly on a long-term basis and it's like we're reaching a sticky point um I will dream for them. And you deliver and that me gives me clarity for this and that gives me direction. Mm -hmm. And and so when a client comes to me and I'm working with them and they say, look, I'm having this series of dreams, then I can use that in connection with the work that we're doing um, to find direction and clarity. But I don't do dream interpretation work. So I hope that clarifies that. That's good because I, I didn't know exactly how uh, you would interpret someone else's dream for them. Yes. And I know that people do that. Yes, there are, there are specific people who do dream interpretation work and I admire them because it is, it is very powerful work. It's, I couldn't begin to do that. And I, I found it interesting that you dream for that person and when you do you set your intention to dream for that individual or does it absolutely you set your intention okay yes. it's like sense. lucid dreaming it's like lucid dreaming before i go before i go to sleep you know i visualize that person i hold them in love and compassion and i ask for clarity i ask for um um i ask for an intention that um I receive information for the highest good that I can hold, um, that I can hold whatever they need to be received in my dreams um, for their uh, support and healing. Uh, I'm going to just get a little personal here. I said that I'm a shaman. Sure. I'm not a Native American. And mm -hmm. I any Native American uh, ancestry of any kind. I was trained by a Micmac healer in ah. the 1940s uh, and it went on for a good many years every summer. Uh, and people resent sometimes the fact that I use the word shaman because Native Americans don't have that word in Absolutely. their own tongues. I use the word because it's now the nomenclature of the day. Everybody knows what you're talking about. It's somebody yes. that once in a while I get a crackpot says, oh, you're some kind of an evil person. <laughs> you, know, you go through that way. So yeah, I, I don't ever wish to imply that uh, our Native Americans are all shaman. They have right. their healers and they have their names for their healers. Well, I just wanted to clarify that. And I wonder how you handle that. Have you run into any adversity from people who say, well, you know, that's not my way. Um, uh, Norman, um, it's, it, I agree with you. 
in the Native American tradition, people lived in small tribes mm -hmm. and everyone knew everyone else. And everyone knew um, what everyone did. I mean, if you had a headache and you needed an herbal remedy, everyone knew who the person was, who grew the herbs and who made the potions. And you'd just walk over to their, to their tent, to their lodge and say, could you give me, could you give me a remedy? Because I have a headache that just won't go away. And the herbalist would say, he, he, sure, here. If you were having difficulty and you needed a, a wise person, a medicine person to help you, you'd walk over to their tent because you knew who they were. Sure. And in our culture, we don't live in tribes, so we don't know who those people are. So we had to give them labels. The Native Americans are offended when we label ourselves because that is not in their tradition. Mm -hmm. um, I, my heritage is, is part Cherokee because my father was three quarter Cherokee, but I was raised as a white girl in a, in a city suburb. And I didn't get into my heritage until I was in my forties, but I'm not a pure blood. And so the native Americans dismiss me because, you know, who are you? You were not raised on the res. And you have no idea what our lifestyle is and how hard it was um, to, um, to live this life. And they're totally right. But I have studied with um, the shamans. Mm -hmm. I have studied this tradition. And this ancestral lineage clearing, I was blessed to be given this path by spirit. I am honored to do this work. Yeah, I think that, you know, that genuine people understand that and, yes. and behave that way. I'm, I'm finding a lot of, uh, I use the word woo-woo. Yes. And I, I'm offended by that. Mm -hmm. I think they're taking advantage of people who really need help. They're taking their money. Yes. And I, I'm sorry to hear that and, and sense that. Uh, I always, my own podcast, I always start that I am a shaman, but I'm not a Native American. Yes. I don't want to then believe that I'm copying and taking their thing. I use the stuff on how to survive in the woods. That's what I was taught. What do you right. do with some? What do you do if you got diarrhea? Yeah. What do you do if you run out of toilet paper? You don't have any. <laughs> right. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> but we learned on how to apply certain plants. And so not all rhubarb are edible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My healing business that I learned and added things that I've done along the way to it. You see, and I, I, don't, uh, I do a lot of Reiki healing. Yes. I, I do that distance. Mm -hmm. I'm not free. And that's, that's how I can give to society a little bit in today's world. We need it, believe me. Right. Right. Uh, would you like to leave us any parting words before I ask you one last question? Certainly. I want everyone to know that your ancestors love you. We don't have a tradition in the Western culture of honoring and connecting to our ancestors. But our ancestors love us and they want to help us. They are there for us to support us, to love us, and to help us heal. And so ask them for their help whenever you need it, and they will be there for you. My last question isn't really a question. Would you again give us the title of your books and where they're available? Sure. <laughs> it's Healing, and, um, Healing Family Patterns ancestral lineage clearing for personal development and changing our genetic patterns, creating a new reality for ourselves and future generations. And you can get them on my website at ancestrallineageclearing.com. And if you can't spell that, go to ariannthomas.com. That's A-R-I-A-N-N thomas.com. And you can also get them on Amazon. So thank you so much, Norm. 
It's been our pleasure, Ariane, and uh, good luck. And Thank you. Your journey more broad. Okay. Good afternoon. Now.